দরকার নেই বাবা ঠিক আছে না জি ম্যাম ঠিক আছে Assalamu alaikum. Our today's discussion topic is mitral stenosis. I hope this is a very popular term used every day in our clinical settings. And what is mitral valve? It is a gateway from the left atrium to the left ventricle. It has two cusps uh, because it is named mitral valve as it looks like Bishop's mitral uh, headdress used in uh, Christianity celebrations. The mitral valve disorder causes an overload on the left atrium in case of mitral stenosis and in case of mitral regurgitation there will be overload effects both on the left atrium and also on the left ventricle so in cases of pure mitral valve stenosis we are going to get the radiological abnormality of the left atrium and in cases of mitral regurgitation we will get the changes overload changes in the left atrium and in the left ventricle what is the normal dimension of mitral valve the annulus is 2.7 to 3.7 centimeter and in cases of uh, diastolic state, the cross-sectional area is four to six square centimeter during diastole. This is not four to five, it will be four to six. Any decrease of cross-sectional area less than two square centimeter leads to mitral stenosis. And again, we have to go through the left-sided heart and our main topic is to make you educate about the extra findings of mitral valvular disease not other else's because those are the matters of uh, super specialities like cardiology and uh, the cardiac ct and mri will be handled by the radiologists and uh, we general people students will deal the eight triplet uh, every day. Thus, you need to be educated with uh, extra findings related to the mitral valvular disease. So in cases of frontal chest radiography, if you can recall, this part is formed by the Innominate arteries, and this is part of the aortic knuckle formed by the aortic arch, and this is formed by the pulmonary trunk. Is this convexity, and this part is uh, produced by the left ventricle throughout. So in PA film, there is no normal structure from the left atrium to be formed in margin. So this is residing really at the back of the heart uh, in chest frontal PA projection. This is a posterior structure which is not forming any sort of border in PA chest X-ray views. And what about the lateral view? If we can recall, here the absent parts of the cardiac chamber says the right ventricle is not forming any border. 
and the left atrium is really not forming any border in frontal chest diagram. And about the lateral view, the right ventricle is here forming the anterior cardiac surface behind the sternum. And here is your the left atrium forming the posterior and upper part of the cardiac shadow uh, in lateral view. The inferior aspect is uh, formed by the left atrium at its superior aspect. The inferior aspect is formed by the left ventricle proper and this is the inferior vena cava forming this area of shadowing. So uh, the left side of the heart can be started from the, from the frontal projection as the left ventricle is forming the left side of the frontal projection. And if we want to assess the left atrium, this is a really lateral view, which uh, helps in cases it is not seen in the PA projection. And the clinical presentation is far better, you know, I think, I hope that you know well, what is the presenting patterns of the, uh, the mitral stenotic patients. They can present with the palpitation, fatigue, some features of heart failure. There would be the presentation by the by the thromboembolic disorders like uh, repeated stroke, repeated uh, fever, like this. And uh, you know that these are the clinical presentations that depicts there is possibility of the geomatic heart disease. And in this context, you know that the primary heart disease, the primary uh, infection is uh, whenever the patient has got, and the patient is uh, getting pancarditis and there is a long, that gets resolution on time and after a long 15, 16, or 1.6 uh, to plus minus three or four years is needed to develop these conditions of uh, valvular damage as part of autoimmune reaction of the uh, body system. And what are the physical signs? You know, the very popular terminology used in describing various specific terminologies in cases of mitral stenosis, like the loud first heart sound or the tapping apex beat on physical examination and uh, the opening snap during diastole and the also there is second heart sound is loud in advanced cases when there is development of the pulmonary hypertension and the association of the murmur and thrill in advancing cases. What is the finding of the mitral stenosis in X-ray? Uh, you juniors are really um, facing the X-ray films every day. And what is our job? Our job is to interpret a better, a nice X-ray explanation. Because you are not always, you will be asked for ultrasonogram to perform. You will not be asked for echocardiography, but you will face a black paper of extra film. So it is a really everyday part of general practitioner, practitioner and also every specialty needs to have a sound X-ray knowledge. And the 
the key factor, the key finding of mitral valvular stenosis is uh, the extra presentation of the disease is the enlargement of the left atrium that we need very perfectly to be oriented left atrial enlargement you have to know this is the only thing we have to be very clear to understand uh, to go through the mitral valvular disease in cases of early presentation there is normal cardiac dimension uh, purely mitral stenosis really does not get any abnormality in cardiac dimension but in most cases in an endemic zone of this uh, part of the world we uh, live here the rheumatic heart disease is so common and it is so neglected also and it is uh, not it is presenting with only mitral stenosis many patients will present with the mitral stenosis and super added mitral regurgitation the initially there will be a prominent left atrial appendage or there would be a bulging or there would be a straightening of the left heart border what is straightening really? You see, the left heart border has some concavities and convexities together, together. And this is the area, the concavity uh, used to say that pulmonary bay. So this concavity is filled this area will be straightened. So there is a uh, misplaying of the straightening of the left heart border because there will be no concavity here. That is called the straightening left heart border and uh, sometimes it would, have, it would have a bulge. There is a uh, fact we have to know that the left atrial appendage and the left uh, bulging for the pulmonary trunk are, are very near uh, abutting each other. So whenever there is a straightening or bulging, we may misinterpret as uh, there is some bulging of the, of the pulmonary trunk. And the other thing is Whenever there is bulging or there is bulging of the pulmonary trunk, we can make a mistake about these things. So we have to be very careful that uh, do we going to miss the straightening of the left heart border or a bulging of the left atrial appendage and the hidden left atrial enlargement. You need a careful interpretation of the situation. You see, this is a normal chest skyogram. I said before that um, this spine is at the midline and on both sides of the spine, the tissue density is the same. This is a very important part. We have to see into the matter that the densities of tissues on both sides of the spine are almost similar. And there is no nothing extra to obscure this spine. Because very soon we are going to enter into the left atrial appendage that will produce some uh, some uh, abnormality about this this uh, this is the called the paraspinal gutter 
um, as in abdomen, we uh, get the paracolic gutter. There is a gutter where the uh, right and left colon resides. There is a dead space there so that the any blood or fluid accumulates there. In cases of paraspinal gutter, paraspinal gutter is important. By the way, I'm talking about because maybe I, I may skip it as it is in front. I'm just telling you that you need to compare the two, two portions of the, those two uh, paracolic paraspinal spaces so that there is no abnormality. And this scenario of the spine seen through and through, you must remember in mind that you, you cannot negotiate that this through and through study of the spine, you must get. This is normal. So you must go through normal, normal, and normal multiple times so that abnormality is not missed. There is a left tetral appendage, and there is left tetral bulging, and there is straightening of the left heart border. Again, the straightening of the left heart border. I have said, said some, uh, something about the left tetral appendage that we should not miss about the enlargement of the left tetral appendage and the, uh, the pulmonary left uh, the pulmonary trunk shadow in the frontal projection of the so you have to be very careful that uh, we cannot miss it as uh, the pulmonary trunk shadow um, and we are if we don't uh, ignore the left lateral appendage to be produced because these these areas very near to each other we have to seek it uh, very nicely and the straightening of the left but again there is a question always as before is this suggest extra should be taken in the standard in the standard factors should be in the film patient should be in the uh, in, in it should be in upright and in the very anatomically it, the clavicles should be equal distant from the dorsal spine so that the x-ray exposure standard so that there should not should not be any mediastinal distortion so the positioning is very important whenever you go to judge an x-ray film you have to be very sure that the exposure factors are standard i have discussed before if you can recall or if you don't know, then we can discuss it later on. The left atrial appendage and the left atrial enlargement. Again, uh, there is no enlargement in chest X-ray during mild stenosis. And what is mild? Mild is uh, the narrowing is less than two centimeter and the moderate stenosis is and the 1.5 up to 1.5 centimeter if it is less than one centimeter then it is severe stenosis and the enlargement is seen in the moderate to severe stenosis what happens in mitral stenosis we see in x-ray there is increased central density that i was talking about that the dorsal spine should be seen through and through see look this spine is seen clear on both sides what happened here that I cannot see well. This part is also well seen. This part is also well seen. What happened here that I just don't get it very clear. And this is what I am saying about that. The abnormality of the through and through uh, study of the 
dorsal spine is very important. You have to see it as through and through it is seen. The area you cannot see, this is the abnormality. You have to be, you must remind it in your mind that the abnormality is, what is that? Every wire in radiology, when you don't see clearly, it is the pathology. Because uh, normally, the normal situations allows the normal things to be seen clearly without any confusion. The places I cannot see is something else that is not allowing me to see it through and through, through and through, so that there is pathology present there. So this is called increased central density. This cardiac shadow is a little bit enlarged. There is uh, enlargement of the cardiac shadow present here, but the single feature you can get in a normal sized cardiac shadow, there is increased central density. And this single thing represents there is an enlargement of the left atrium producing a large blood pool over here as a bag and producing this central density seen at the posterior aspect of the heart and causing the reduced vision of the dorsal spine. And what is the next? There is elevation of the left principal bronchus with an obtuse angle. Normally, This, this is the track here, and this is the left principal bronchus running long across the superior aspect of the cardiac shadow, and this is the right principal bronchus descending. In between these two principal bronchi, there is an acute angle. It is less than 90 degree. It is called acute angle. They are, they are playing smoothly on both sides. Of course, the right one is more vertical, we know. Now, what is here? The, there is the left principal bronchus it's not like this. It's not like this. The left one is elevated and there is an obtuse angle produced in between them. So this is the feature. Uh, there is increased central density and there is elevation of the left principal bronchus and production of an obtuse angle in between. There is right heart border, double contour of the right heart border is an important feature, a very popular feature for us, uh, presence of double right heart border. Then how it is double and why this is not single, you see, there is a convexity here and running median. And another border is running and touching the hemidiaphragm. Uh, in flared cases, this right hard border is sometimes formed by the 
right atrium <coughs> by the left atrium. This is normal right atrium reaching the heavy diaphragm and the left atrial border sometimes may form the right heart border and it is running towards the spine. It is called, it is forming a C curve. So the border that reaches, that runs towards the spine is formed by the left atrium and the border that is touching the right hemidiaphragm that is formed by the right atrium. Thus, the double contour of the right heart border is a very popular term unique for this left atrial enlargement and they are by mitral stenosis. And what about the indentation over the thoracic esophagus posteriorly? Those time before, when I was a student of uh, final year, I have seen those uh, x-ray of, uh, uh, of our surgery department uh, teachers, they uh, taught us the raw view, a right anterior oblique view to show the indentation of the left atrial enlargement over the esophagus along its uh, below the indentation of the left principal bron bronchus there is uh, enlargement enlarged left atrium is going to produce a smooth indentation that is seen in the uh, medium swallow esophagus So, and this, this extra has got another features present here. There is a prosthesis along the mitral valve and there is also the classical presentation of the enlargement of the latrium that's producing straightening of the left heart border. You see, I have said you before that what is straightening of the left heart border? The left heart border has got there is also some rotation is present here. The right uh, clavicular medial end is far from the uh, dorsal spine, rather from the left one. Even then, there is uh, the this is produced by the pulmonary trunk and this is the left atrial appendage the concavity uh, just next to the next to the uh, the pulmonary trunk shadow is the pulmonary is the space for the left atrial appendage it is full and rather it is some there is some bulge leaving all those things there is no concavity in this left heart border just this uh, border is is uh, running from the pulmonary trunk down to the left ventricle straight. So this is the straightening of the left heart border. There is increased central density present here. There is double contour of the right heart border. This left heart left atrium is uh, inside the cardiac uh, shadow. It is not forming the right border. Even then, there is dual uh, right heart border present here. And this uh, heart has got also, there is bulged left atrial appendages here. This is the shadow for the pulmonary trunk. And so there is enlargement of the cardiac shadow here. The enlargement is uh, left ventricular type. So the left ventricle and left atrium both are enlarged. And there is also this area is, I think, a little bit hazy than this part or this part. Left atrium is enlarged, left atrial appendage is bulged, and there is double contour of the right heart border and the left ventricle is enlarged. So this is a case of left atrial and left ventricle enlargement and enlarged cardiac shadow. 
this is not a pure microstenosis really. Uh, there is association of the regurgitation also. This is the ch this chest X-ray has got again a very nice presentation of the left atrial enlargement. You see, there is a dense shadow present at the area of the back of the heart, and there is production of the double contour right at border. This border is running down, and this is uh, running towards the spine, and this is the left atrial appendage here and there is left atrial enlargement. So I think uh, this is the clinical part of the cardiac shadow in case of uh, mitral stenosis. Uh, And the later part will be presented with the uh, uh, other parts like its vascular changes, the gradual vascular changes, uh, what happens and the association of the regurgitation and other parts I shall try to discuss with you. And if you have any question, you can make text to me. I shall try to answer you. Do you have any question? If you don't have any question, then we are going to close the session. Thank you for your presence and hearing me.